Hey, all doing? Um, in this book review, I'm going to go over a sequel to a book I did about a year ago at the time I started filming this. Um, is a sequel to Sherry McCrum's book, Bimbos of the Death Sun. It's a murder mystery involving J. Omega, who is a teacher's engineering and, um, at the university. He writes a science fiction book, so he's going to try and promote it through, um, through this convention here, through the help of his girlfriend, Dr. Marion Farley, who teaches science fiction in universities and English major and all that. So, but a murder happens and he went and go solve this. And this is a very um, entertaining mystery. I'm not a huge reader of mysteries, nothing against them. I just haven't gotten into the genre that well. But this I you know, greatly enjoyed. I like the characters. But she, Sharon McCrum, makes a sequel involving J Omega and Dr. Marion Farley, Zombies of the Gene Pool. This came out in the early 90s. And, well, let's go over the story here. The story begins with uh, Marion Farley, uh, while teaching her, cor um, her course in science fiction, came, comes to realize that one of her colleagues in the English department, Eric Giles, who teaches um, English literature, it was once a science fiction writer as a young man, published under the name C.A. Stormcock. Well, after discovering it, he invites um, J. Omega and um, Dr. Farley to dinner, and he describe you know he describes um, his um, past and um, what it was he was part of a group of writers called the Lanthanides. These were young men who, due to the inheritance of one of the members, have they started living in this farmhouse they called the Fan Farm. This was a place they all lived together. They uh, tried to support whatever he can and hopefully make it big in the world of science fiction through writing or um, making fan uh, writing a fanzine which they publish and one of the members still does today and. Um, they enjoyed themselves with the good times and bad. And what happened is, is is that one of the main events of this group was they were going to a science fiction convention in California. So they all get, uh, saved up whatever they could. They you know, just got started along their way, but all of a sudden their car breaks down. So they had to drive back. Well, sad by the case, they decided to lighten up their mood by creating a convention of their own. So they got together a couple of friends, some of their girlfriends from outside the farm, and uh, they grabbed some beers and they, you know, they had their own little get together. And they decided to make a time capsule. And this time capsule will have short stories from each of the members of the Lanthanides, some fan scenes that they publish, some posters, a letter, you know, a letter that was um, that they sent to. Um, Joseph Campbell, a famous magazine editor who actually existed, and they got to, you know, you know they want he want they wanted him to write a letter um, for the time capsule itself, you know, for the future, and they got one back unopened, so they all put it in, they buried it by a tree by the farm, and left it at that. Sometime later, the city was bought off by a company that built a dam and it run a flood the area, so they had to go their separate ways. Others just uh, continued on to their um, dream of trying to become successful in real science fiction. Others just went out, you know, grew out of it and went their separate lives. One became a Hollywood mogul. One was a successful science fiction writer, but he's going through spells in and out of his mind, and you know, he has an assistant. One continues the fanzine that they started all those years ago. One um, stayed in stayed at a town in Tennessee um, and, be, and became a lawyer. At the time of the story, he's half retired. Some of the members have died. And Eric Giles tells them all this, and he is saying that they're having a reunion. You see, the dam is now being drained to, you know, to, you know, to fit, have some repairs done on it. This will expose the land, you know, that was underwater, including the farm. And they're planning to um, get together with this reunion and going out there and get the time capsule. Since some of them are famous and all that, they'll go, and they had some of the early published stories, they could take those stories out and then give it to, um, to auction off to other publishers for an anthology. And they all get a cut based on, you know, of, of the profits. So, Giles, having a heart attack, you know, you know from a year before, he wants Marion and J. Omega to assist him to help him, um, you know, just in case things go badly and all that. He also doesn't want to be alone during all this. So they agree. They go up to a lodge and they all decide to get together. And as they get set up, the, there was a pre-reunion the night before the actual reunion. So all the members get together and catch up on the old times, both good and bad. And everything was going fine. In fact, more members, you know, the members that were already alive showed up in an unexpected one. One who has been dead since 1958, Pat Malone. And this guy is uh, notorious through um, his writings throughout the fanzine and all that. He tells, uh, he, you know, 
kind of berates them that they all sold out in their life. Um, they were wondering how the heck did he survive? He died years ago. And, you know, he says, well, it's kind of easy to fake your own death. And, and even though they haven't seen him since 1958, is this really him? Well, he seems to know a lot about them, including the secrets that many of the Lanthanides don't want anyone else to know. Well, with that uneasy reunion there, they decided to call it a night, and the next day, the, they start to get together to um, excavate the time capsule. Um, some of the members of the Lanthanides didn't show up there, so Farley, Dr. Farley goes out, finds one, they get, you know, they get ready, but also they find out Pat Malone, who's been dead for, since you know, 1958, is dead again, for real. And that's where the murder mystery comes in. So while they go out and get a time capsule, Mary and J. Omega are trying to find out who is, um, who, what happened with Pat Malone. Was he, did he die of natural causes? Was he murdered? In that case, who murdered him? Is this actually Pat Malone or is this an imposter? All these questions are coming about. So I'm going to leave it at that. And um, so you could read it and enjoy it for yourselves. I enjoyed this one just as much as the first one. It's a bit darker in, in compared to the first one. Because this one definitely shows um, on the sides there the dark side of fandom. Um, bear in mind, this is before internet, but it kind of shows that people are still people. Um, technology just changes the way they express it. Like, um, a lot of you know, how fanzines are and um, how it shows all what people enjoy about what they you know, what they like but it also shows um, how people pull pranks on everyone else um, the attachment some fans want to have with the writers that they enjoy and doesn't turn out that way um, but other than that it does have a murder she wrote feel so if you enjoy things like murder she wrote with some humorous parts um, uh, I think you should enjoy all this. Now, I'm, I'm not a huge mystery, as I said before, I'm not a huge mystery reader, but um, so I don't know how these hold up to other mysteries throughout the genre. Maybe these are just fun rides. Um, the first one got an Edgar Allan Poe wrote, award for best original um, new paperback, so it's got to be something. But um, yeah, I think they're still enjoyable all the same. I particularly like the first page of the book where Dr. Farley is talking to one of her students who not only makes an you know, makes an argument that Joe, um, Robert Silverberg, a modern day science fiction writer, has a story that's similar to a Joseph Conrad, a non science fiction writer who he's one famous for writing the uh, Heart of Darkness. So he finds he says that Robert Silverberg's story is you know similar to a story by Joseph Conrad, and he accuses Conrad of plagiarism. I just found that funny as well. And some of you know who I'm talking about, you need know, to see where that joke is. It's little quips like that that makes this enjoyable. But other than that, I mean, it's a good, you know, good short mystery. It's a little bit shorter than Bimbo's of the Death Sun. And so it should be a relatively quick read. But there you go. Zombies of the Gene Pool. Give it a shot there. But don't forget to read the first book, Bimbo's of the Death Sun. So, and there's only two of these. As far as I know, the writer did not make any... Um, sequels involving these characters, so it should be quick for you to find, cheap in any used bookstore. I got this for only a couple of bucks through Amazon, you know, through one of the booksellers there. But, but there you go. Zombies of the Gene, Gene Pool by um, Sharon McCrum. Thank you all for watching. You have a nice day.